Hello dear co-creative, love, destiny and peace weavers. Here's Erica, Erica Amazing Me, like the name of my uh, website. You can hear in my voice today, uh, it's a bit husky because I've got like a cold. Um, but I'm still very happy to come and to do this reading, this live reading for next week. And also saying a big, big thank you to those who followed the threads of weaving um, in our first peace weaving circle where we met over the last full moon and Scorpio and the eclipse portal which is very very powerful and with the intention of weaving peace that's the symbol that originated for me and it's the rune of the Yggdrasil tree the life tree and um, the rune I was, which also stands for the yew tree, which is the oldest, most resilient tree in the world. And the red around it is like a DNA. The DNA which weaves the new earth, the new humans, future humans, um, based on love and peace and harmony. And that's why I also um, embroidered the Slavic symbol of the harmonious goddess. Regini, which who um, weaves balance between the yin and the yang. Um, so thank you very much for everyone who attended and and woven their own intention and their own expression of peace. I find that this is so powerful. The more of us come together, and, and uh, it's in our hands taking the development of the, the new earth into our own hands and maybe you've listened to the story I posted today it's a podcast by Michael Mead where he also tells the story it's one of the oldest story from um, Apache Indians about the power of co-creation and weaving of a very very old woman who sits in a cave and she weaves the most beautiful tapestry sorry in the world and and also uh, goes to stir in the cauldron of all special seeds and herbs so she keeps walking between weaving of the tapestry and stirring in the cauldron until a dark dog, which dark dog you might wonder, well, it could be any dark period, any challenges in history like we see abound nowadays from war in the Ukraine, from climate change, racist wars, I mean, you name it. There are so many dark, challenging times. And the story continues that this dark dog um, tears apart this beautiful tapestry and what is the response of this uh, elder weaver she doesn't get desperate or angry she picks up a thread and starts from a new uh -huh. and just sees what is unraveling then and then and then and I think this is such a powerful story and it's very encouraging and this is what I um, understand under the weirding way which is also the title of my uh, first book here it's called the weirding way the mysterious of art of weaving your own destiny where you also see weavers in Norse mythology those are the three norms for the past present and future urt verdandi skuld and in Norse mythology, it is said that they have woven all the threads in the universe and also carved the runes from the world tree Yggdrasil. So I love the synchronicity between our rune for peace of the life tree Yggdrasil, which we have uh, woven in our peace circle. Uh, and now this story is like weaving um, the feminine creative powers with intention and creating the new and it's a process of doing it again and again so 
some people might think like oh the dark dog in the story he has like taken won everything apart so um, what is happening now but um, I understand this wisdom of the story is like it's an invitation to not get desperate uh, in crisis but just take up a new thread and connect to our own destiny thread because we are all woven in a unique way in the whole big universe that's why I love giving birth runes reports which give you the six main hero makers which are set in Norse mythology um, to have woven you in a very unique way in the soul tapestry and, and in that way you can gain more awareness um, yeah, about your thread what Michael Meads is telling the story is most important to connect with our unique thread and then start to weave something new not to get desperate from the dark times and challenges but because we all have got those individually and collectively but instead use those dark times to create something new from it so I think that's the wisdom of the story uh, sorry about that and I also write about the weavers in my book because weirding means conscious weaving of our own destiny. So the weirding, through the weirding way, we can pick up our own threads of life and consciously shape and weave our destiny in the worldwide tapestry of life, like this wise elder in the story. We will feel connected to our own soul's purpose and with the people and universe all around. Connected on the human, spiritual and universal level. Connected to our own soul and the soul of the world. We can live a co-creative life with our own soul and source. We can learn to get centered, get in touch with our own soul, this inner thread inside and become a co-creative vessel through which the spirit expresses itself. That is called the weirding way, the conscious destiny wind way in my book. Weird comes from old weird Norse language and means that which has become or woven. The three Norns in Norse mythology, Urd, Verdanti and Skuld, weave the destiny of all. But when we center ourselves and pick up our own unique destiny thread, and connect with the web of weird, which is the source, love, zero point energy field, or womb of all existence. Then we ourselves become destiny weavers, just like the three norms, and can consciously weave our own destiny, or like the woman in the story. So call it a dream or the treasure hard to attain, call it a vocation or the awakening of one's inner genius, call it what you will, up in hearing the call we must follow or else lose the who, the true thread of our lives. So my vision is holding the thread and weaving our destiny in a co-creative way. So women have always done something with their hands and stitching has a long tradition in many different countries and cultures around the world. In Nordic tradition those are the three faiths. In, in Greek tradition they are the Moirans, in the Roman they are the Parsons, so, um, or the three weirding sister in the Shakespearean play across many different cultures those uh, fate weavers have been um, very important like also in the story of the elder woman who does not despair but just picks up a new thread and weaves something new so wouldn't you like to remember and pick up this mysterious art of consciously weaving your own destiny 
following the Slavic embroidery tradition, um, seven years old girls already start to stitch the destiny towers called Rushnik, stitching particular symbols to manifest certain things in their lives. In this tradition, women also stitch particular destinies through symbols for babies, married couples, deceased people to take in their graves and for certain other important occasions. This is a long and powerful tradition of consciously manifesting destiny. My remembering and reconnection with my ancestor Ruth also started with weaving what you see here, my destiny towel. It's Slavic symbols. That's why I also always pick uh, this Slavic goddess archetypal energy for the week. And if you're interested to find your main uh, energy, you can get in touch with me. Uh, and I can also give you your main energy and also the seven soul tree horoscope archetypal energies which I've woven in my shamanic dress. And we can go even deeper than that. So this mysterious art is usually passed on from elders to youngsters in, in women's circles. As the famous poem by Rainer Maria Rilke illustrates, destiny itself is like a wonderful white tapestry in which every thread is guided by an unspeakable tender hand, placed beside another thread and carried by a hundred others. That's why I'm imagining that we come together more regular to weave the peace symbols. And it's like a mandala and like a seed with many, many more seeds weaving a mandala of the new world of peace and love. So it's an invitation to you to come uh, to the circle uh, with me and to discover uh, and gain more clarity about your unique destiny thread to fulfill your heroic journey here um, on, the, uh, on, on Earth, which is called the Midgard in Norse mythology. So wouldn't it be wonderful for each of us women to pick up our own unique thread and weave this tapestry of life more consciously together, connected in the big void of emptiness, which is also the weird, it's not all the meaning of fate, but weird is also a rune of nothingness, where everything originates from. We all come from the womb of the mother and cosmologically everything gets born of the dark matter which also means mother the cosmic womb of all existence it's pure potentiality the great womb of all existence so may this book the weirding way <laughs> uh, be like an invocation um, or when you come to co-creatively weave with me an invocation to find out and gain more clarity about your destiny either through birth rooms reports or different online courses which I'm offering or a soul tree horoscope uh, reading for all the details I will give you uh, um, yeah, some links after the video and now to the uh, oracle card for the next week like two weeks ago, it's again Taming the Wind. It's got a lot to do with feathers and connecting to the spirit world. I'm just going to read out to you. The essence of this card. Here the feather. A symbol that is used in clearing ceremonies for smudging reminds you of the sacred commitment you make to your light. This is the symbol of consciously bringing the spiritual into the material, infusing the world with reverence and an acknowledgement of the higher planes of existence that influence and animate all life. The feather is a symbolic reminder of the liberation entering into a partnership with the great spirit to co-create for the highest good for all the invitation is 
it's time to clear your energy be present and become conscious of how you communicate this is a good time to write in a journal and put your thoughts into a cohesive form Perhaps you need to actually do a smudging ceremony in your home or office, creating a sacred space to write about your dreams and desires. Just remember, then when, timing, when taming the wind appears as a symbol, it is time to honor the great spirit with reverence and respect. The medicine is to clean, it's time to clean up any misunderstandings with others. Clear the air after disagreements and allow others to share the side of things. You are called now to be a good listener. This is not a time to be right. It's a time for you to understand rather than be understood. Good things come out of this restraint of tongue and pen. You will be surprised at how things get resolved when you allow for all sides to have value. And about the snatching ceremony, I also take out here my um, feather. It's from my from a raven because raven is mine. Berigini here main uh, main archetypal power. <laughs> if you want to find out yours. Get in touch with me and also some sage from my balcony so i love doing smudging ceremonies <laughs> and the birigini is a slavic goddess symbol for the next week just a symbol It's from the sixth circle. The sixth circle stands um, for wisdom. And from the middle earth. This is a supporter or a protector. The main theme is justice. In the affirmation, I feel supported on all different levels. You can use the symbol when you need support in a challenging situation or where you want to bring in justice to. I have embroidered in specifically in this shape where I put the message inside is like a little womb and you can put it in your bra <laughs> and um, I also draw an energy every day um, of a particular uh, goddess energy so a soul tree horoscope I, I have embroidered like seven of the main energies which stand free for the roots my main energy the raven and three who stand for our future for the potential to uh, fulfill in this life that's why I've embroidered it here the sleeves because when I put them up um, they are like I'm stretching my arms, my wings to fulfill my destiny and it's such a fantastic very deep way to discover what kind of alleys um, weave through us Yeah, and you can always connect with those energies and embroidery is such a fantastic way because it's very slow, it's the slowest uh, hand crafting I know and in that way you can get to know in a deeper and deeper layer your alleys which support you throughout your whole life and similarly i also love the runic astrology where you can discover sex main hero uh, makers they're called sex main runes which are said have been woven by the norniers which i told you about in my book on the cover page uh, how they have woven you in the bigger soul tapestry of life and if you're interested in that, you can also contact me. And the rune for next week is Berkana. This stands for sacred feminine, uh, feminine wisdom. You can uh, see uh, it like the two breasts or also like a womb. 
or like a mother who births a baby yeah I also like to when I see it like this it's like the two mountains so it stands for a sacred feminine wisdom and also for the birch tree it's the rune for spring which of course here uh, in the northern hemisphere we're in the midst of spring and everything is blooming and and I feel like passing on this wisdom of the Slavic um, archetypal powers or the uh, Norse, uh, Nornir's wisdom of, um, of the woven runes and how we have been woven uniquely and to gain more clarity about our unique thread in the big web of weird it is part of passing on the sacred uh, feminine wisdom onto you and so once again I, I love the synchronicities coming together in co-creative weaving circles the type of like energies and powers which are woven within us can give us so much empowerment yeah even in those dark times like this woman in the beginning of the story I've been telling about to hold on to our unique piece of thread and to start to co-creatively weave the new earth so thank you for listening uh, for being there last week for our circle get in touch with me either through reading my books or like there I've got a weirding way school on teachable and want to offer those co-creative circles weaving circles more and more uh, frequently so thank you very much Blagadaryu in Russian many blessings